I'm an eighth generation West Virginian, and I'm here tonight to tell you how proud I am of this state. I just heard a man a moment ago who told us that the, that the water that they were going to be putting out through this, uh, through the wastewater treatment was not going to have any environmental effect on our water. Well, I'll tell you what my mother said, that you cannot date the truth. You're either married to it or you're not. The water balance diagram is just about the most confusing flowchart I have ever seen. And in my career, I have seen a lot of flowcharts. It appears that every process is connected to every other process. The direction of flow is not indicated on the diagram. There is on the chart a verbal reassurance that flow to Roxel processes is a one-way flow, so there is no risk of contamination to discharge water, but I see absolutely nothing to back that statement up anywhere in the uh, application for the permit, let alone on this chart. Why you allow someone to come in and send 14,000 gallons a day into your wastewater treatment plant, and there's not even a plan if they can handle it. They don't even know what's in the water. So I'm asking the DEP, not because I really expect an answer, but I'd like an answer. How, how can you permit something when you don't even know the facts? Many faith communities, including my faith community in Berkeley County, use the Shenandoah River, which was mentioned tonight, for river baptisms. You have your river riders that also have a lot of recreational activities in that river. We can't use 340 because there's so many people enjoying that particular river. My grandfather built a lake in 1962 in Olney, Illinois, 200 acres. It was the best bass fishing you could ever imagine. He had signs that said, leave this place cleaner than you found it. And people did that. Otherwise, he would throw them out. Rockwell, my grandpa would have kicked you off his property. Check the boxes. I've seen it in southern West Virginia with mountaintop removal. I've seen a slurry, a slurry coal dam like 100 yards from a school that the DEP approved. But because people fought and fought, they finally got that slurry coal dam shut down. Our own reports, impact study, MOUs, and application for financial assistance have water usage numbers ranging from 100,000 gallons per day and up to 320,000, with Jefferson Utilities guaranteeing no less than 500,000 per day to the orchard site. Discharge numbers have ranged from 13,000 gallons per day up to 100,000 gallons per day. Rockwool stormwater violations have already possibly killed Madison Cave isopods, a federally endangered species. They were fully aware of the isopods' presence and the practices to prevent harming them. Have they ever denied a permit modification? And in my nine years of experience of working with West Virginia EP, I have not seen one. So I don't have a whole lot of hope that they're going to deny it. So a lot of the constituents in their water will be concentrated four times before going to the Charlestown Wastewater Treatment Plant. So I've been trying to make sense of this table. There's a table that was included in the, uh, the permit documents that lists a number of things such as magnesium, sodium, potassium, barium. Uh, and I did some calculations and some of these constituents are coming out at about five times greater concentrations than they're going in. Um, some of them are coming out at seven, some are coming out at eight times concentration of what they're going in. So first of all, I'm not really sure why there's not, maybe there's something happening chemically in the water that I don't know that's making it so that not all of them, okay, that not all of them come out at the same concentration as one another. Um, but we have sodium and chloride coming out um, very, very, very high. And this is, I assume, from the water softening system. Chloride has been shown in research studies to decrease the capacity of wastewater treatment plants to remove nutrients. That is the purpose of a wastewater treatment plant, especially when we are trying to comply with Chesapeake Bay agreements. Um, let's reduce those nutrients coming out. What is to happen if these, all these chlorides going into the wastewater stream damage the, the, the new ter tertiary treatment capacity of the, the wastewater treatment plant? Who is responsible? Who is on the hook? Is that CTUB or is that Rockwell if we have a violation um, that results in non-compliance. I'm a huge outdoors person along with five grandkids and Evans Run is a state stocked trout stream. So the state invests in the trout, they stock the stream that Rockwell's going to kill if we allow this permit. 
Next question I had was the application states that the effluent will total a maximum of 14,900 gallons per day, but the permit appears to be for 17,000 gallons per day. So what other water are we talking about here? Because those two numbers are not equal. Chloride, it's been mentioned before. The permit modification states that up to 5,000 milli milligrams per liter um, will be discharged to the plant. The human health criteria, the limit to protect our health is 250 milligrams per liter. How are we gonna get from 5,000 to 250? That needs calculated and explained. Every time we go to a meeting in Charlestown, we hear something different. I would ask all of you, do you actually know how much water is gonna be going down that sewer? No, you don't. We don't know either. It all depends on who they're talking to, the answer you're going to get. One day, if they want the number to be low, for instance, if they're wanting to get some kind of permit where they're going to get a minor modification out of y'all, and then later they're going to want another one, they'll give you a small number. They'll say, well, we're only going to use X number of gallons, right? Then the next time when they say they're going to come up with this many jobs, well, then they'll talk about how much they're actually going to be using when they have the second factory built. So it'll be 360000 then if they want to talk about paying back the money they're going to borrow on our backs, suddenly it becomes 500,000 gallons. It doesn't matter what the answer is you get from them, it's the one that you want to hear. Compliance. No information in this uh, permit modification uh, includes non-compliance or pollutant discharge estimates because they say this is a new facility. But we know that there are other facilities like this, so the DEP must uh, request compliance reports and discharge, pollutant discharge um, monitoring reports from the other facilities in order to make an informed decision. How can you grant a permit on unknown amount Rockwell refuses to get? They won't tell us their usage. They won't tell us what they're going to do. I guess they think we're a bunch of morons, but we're not. That's why we're here tonight. There's a reason Rockwell got their air permit first, and this is something you haven't thought of, and I didn't even think about it until two hours ago. The air permit and the water usage are inextricably linked. Water is a gas when it's hot. The air permit allows phenol gas, formaldehyde gas, methanol gas, water vapor gas. It's a gas because it's hot. They keep it hot so they can eject it through the stack. Why doesn't Rockwell treat their own water? They could. The answer is because if they did that, they'd have to cool the stack. And if they cool the stack, the phenol, methanol, formaldehyde will now be in the water instead of the air. And they'd have to clean up their mess instead of pushing it through their stack right across from our school. Rockwell is submitting very low usage numbers to appease Charlestown Council and the public and to achieve a minor modification. In addition, CTAB and Rockwell has not been forthcoming with what is in their sewage. They claim it is only reverse osmosis and sanitary waste. Again, Rans Ransom's FOIA documents revealed an email dated March 20th, 2000. 17 from Deloitte, Rockwell's consulting agency, to Jane Arnett of CTUB, which describes Rockwell will be discharging over 2,600 or 20, yeah, 2,600 gallons per day of water from cleaning paint treated with flocculants. Phenol and ammonia will also be present in their waste. This information was never formally or officially disclosed to Charlestown Council or to the public. There's only two things that we know for sure about Rockwell is that they lie and that they will poison us. The next question I have is, water softeners and reverse osmosis units remove unwanted materials from the water. For instance, metals, salts, these enter what's called the reject stream. Therefore, the reject stream will contain much larger amounts of those unwanted materials than what was present in the beginning as the water came in from the utility company. What protections will be put in place so that our streams do not receive large discharges of materials that could harm aquatic life? Again, nothing in the permit application did I see that would answer that question. What's going to be in that water? Nobody has any idea. Do you have any idea what's in it? 
we know they're going to use reverse osmosis, right? And it's going to put all of the, the hard water, all the stuff that makes it hard, back into the water. But just the other day, Jennifer King found out it isn't just that. There's going to be paint in it. There's going to be flocculants that they use to help supposedly make this stuff settle. Did they tell anybody about that? No, Jane knew about it. Where's Miss Arnett? She knew about it. But did she tell Charlestown Town Council? No, they weren't told about that. Now he comes in and tells you, you have to give them a permit. How many times have we heard that? You have got to give us this permit because we have checked the right boxes. Every time I come to one of these government meetings, I hear that somebody, all they got to do is check the boxes. Well, I'll tell you what, with time on your hands and enough bananas, you could train surface monkeys to throw out the pages that don't have the right boxes, Chuck. You've got to do more than just check the right boxes. You're supposed to be here to be protecting the environment, the Department of Environmental Protection. Anybody who could look you in the eye and tell you they're going to scoot this stuff down the sewer and it's not going to ruin the water is telling you a lie. We're here asking you today to do the kind of research that these people have been doing. Don't just give them a permit because they've checked the right boxes. That's not a job that anybody's paying y'all to do. We're paying you to protect us. Please do the kind of research these people have done and deny this permit. Once upon a time, a bunch of hippies tried to clean up and stop pollution. It was a huge problem for industry. So President Richard Nixon created the EPA. And the polluting factories and companies lined up to tell them what the regulations were going to be. Community. I have never seen anything like this. And what is impressed upon me is that these decisions shouldn't be made in Charleston. That these decisions should be made locally here in the community. And the community has said we don't want this. So I, I appeal to the decision makers in Charlestown who are listening to this and hopefully, hopefully considering these comments, that they take a proactive step and withdraw this modification. Withdraw it. 